Hi Capricorn, welcome to your August 2022 Taroscope with me Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, my readings are for your Sun, Moon and Ascendant signs, so whether you're a Sun, Moon or Rising sign, Cappy, this is for you. And I always advise that you watch all three to get a clearer, more complete picture of how they're going to speak to you. With that said, remember they are general readings, not everything's going to resonate with everybody and that is just fine, you should always use your own discernment. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my day of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you in your path to your highest vibrational good. So for your actions and interactions with the world at large this month, you've got the five of wands. Uh, you've also got... <clears throat> We'll get into the other cards uh, after that. Um, but your five. Of, so, in terms of this month, this is about you deciding to become a competitor. So, Capricorn, you guys have kind of gone through this process for a little while, where you've decided, you know what, I'm going to stop. I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to relax. I'm going to rest. I'm going to recuperate. Um, you know, you've you've kind of been laying low for a while, and so this. Uh, five of Wands basically says you're ready to jump back into the fray, uh, which is is cool. <laughs> you know, we're, we're here for it. Um, but what it really speaks to me of is this is about you getting back into or reigniting that competitive spark that you have, which I actually think could be very good for you. And I think it could be... Um, you know, it could be the driving force uh, behind the forward momentum that you're looking for. Now, the other thing with the Five of Wands, remember this card usually uh, shows up when some of the interpersonal stuff is about to get loud. And you've got this with the five, uh, with the Eight of Swords in your communications and conversations. So the message behind that combination for me, because the eight of, com eight of Swords in the communications and conversations, that's a conversation that has a recurring theme that you're unable to break out of or unable to move past or beyond. With the Five of Wands here, this may see you looking at this and saying, right, okay, this has been a thing for X amounts of time. It is, you know, it's been on my mind. It's been a problem. And I'm not willing to keep having this conversation or to keep going over this thing over and over. And it's like this time you're saying, right, okay, you know what, what can I do? in order to move things forward. Uh, so this kind of competitive streak, it's kind of, really, I kind of feel like this is aimed at getting out of a rut of some sort. So you're being really honest, really open, but very resolute about how you get forward from here. So you're kind of saying, right, okay, this this is going to end one way or another because I'm not, comp I'm not prepared to have or to continue to keep having the same conversation. So it's like you're breaking out of a box and you're doing this by maybe even upsetting the apple cart a little bit. Usually I see the Ten of Wands as upsetting the apple cart, but the Five of sort of five of Wands here with that Eight of Swords, it's like you're, I'm busting out of this. There's something that I keep having to go through, I keep having to go over, I keep having to explain myself, I'm not doing it anymore. Fair play to you. For your um, love, and when it comes to the professional sphere as well, for some of you, you might be looking at the job, the work, and deciding, right, how can I move forward now? How can I evolve beyond what is available to me at this moment in time? Which, you know, is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, what it also says is, as well, this is gonna be a month where you, you really are looking for alternative solutions. Then you've got the, um, Queen of Wands, and so the Queen of Wands in your uh, love and relations, the Queen of Wands is also a very competitive energy. And uh, the thing about this card, it usually speaks to, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, it, it is quite a competitive energy, right? So for those of you that are partnered, married, or in long-term commitment, maybe you're looking at your relationship and saying, right, you know what? I want to, um, you know, I want us to be more of a priority. I want me to be a more more of a priority in your life or in your world. This might be a, a conversation that you've had before. It's it's possible for some of you, not all of. Um, another way that this could show up is energy, passion, sex, vibrancy, excitement 
comes back into the relationship. It might be attached to a little bit of contention. It might have some, <laughs> you know, some moments. It might have, you know, maybe it's the, the, the really great makeup sex that you have after, you know, you have a really intense conversation or, a, you know, discussion or a debate of some sort. There's something here that almost says like, yes, there are gonna be moments where things feel like they're contracting, but that's only so that you can really expand beyond what you're experiencing right now. So that Queen of Wands could be very good in the relationship. It also is a card of boundaries, right? And you've got this with the Eight of Swords. So for a select few of you, maybe you're having to set a boundary around your relationship, not necessarily within it. Um, you know, maybe this is somebody that is prying or being a bit too nosy. Maybe this is somebody that is, um, you know, you know, like the sort of person that's always there when your relationship is not in a good state, but when it's good, they're like, oh yeah, but do you remember that time that dot, 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 like, do you know what I mean? Like this is you steering clear of that, or maybe drawing a circle around yourself and your partner and your family and saying, right, those people I'm gonna keep out of my business from here on in. For those of you that are single and looking, vibrant, passionate, sexy, um, alluring, somebody that is really very aware of themselves inside and out, uh, could be making their way into your life. This could be an Aries, a Leo, or a Sagittarius. Um, it could be a fire sign that really just sets your bones on fire. And I gotta be honest, this is because of the cards that they're flanked by, this is probably somebody that will be able to stimulate your mind just as much as they'll be able to stimulate your body. Um, I don't know why though. Well, no, I do know why. Uh, it's just a really long way of explaining it. So all I am going to say is, um, if this is somebody that's coming into your life in the month of August, expect this person not to be going anywhere anytime soon. And that's something obviously only you can decide if you're comfortable with. When it comes to your money and materials, you've got the Nine of Swords. So there are, there are money worries, not necessarily money troubles this month, okay? So you're looking at what the options are that are available to you. But it's like maybe you're trying to expand something or do something too quickly and a partner is saying to you, hang on a sec, you know, we need to be a bit more cautious, we need to, and there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing wrong with either side of it, as long as you're agree in agreement. but in terms of the money, there are many worries, but not many problems, I think is, is the, the biggest part that I can say to you, and obviously, our mind is the thing that makes everything real, so set it to work for you. The other thing with that Nine of Swords, um, late night binge shopping, uh, you know, could could definitely be a thing because it's in your money and materials as well. Uh, late night binging in terms of food could could also be a thing. So just be mindful, all right? Um, oh, wrong deck. Just be mindful uh, around uh, that stuff this month. So for your first week of the month, you got the star card with the five of wands. Like, I really like this for you getting your mojo back. I really do feel that this is you tapping back into that creative spirit. It's like this month you're really turned on by the idea of the future, like what's next? There's a new friendship group in here as well coming in. Um, so for those of you that are, you know, that have hobbies, maybe you go to a runner's group, maybe you go to yoga class, like whatever you do that is physical, you have a potential to meet new friends in this first week of the month that could really be, uh, you know, very special parts of your life moving forward, which is really nice. For the second week of the month, look at this, you've got the Sun card. So this, remember what I said about you wanting to break a situation? That Sun card with the Eight of Swords, remember the Sun card enhances our blessings, it ba you know, it lessens or even banishes sometimes our, uh, you know, our challenges or our lessons. And this, because you've got this Five of Wands, this is a breaking of a certain situation. I think this month, in the first half of August, you're gonna see a break in your situation when it comes to a communication or a conversation that you're having to continually have. And at the end, like by the time you get into the second week of the month, you will have broken it and you will, you'll be really glad that you held to your guns. Um, love it. For your second week of the, the third week of the month, you've got the Magician card with the Queen of Wands. So I'm gonna tell you, whoever, for those of you that are single and looking, whoever is coming into your world this month, that's a world traveler. 
but this is also a very powerful person. This is somebody who is completely embodied in their experience and their um, expression. Someone that knows themselves inside and out. This is someone that knows what they like in the bedroom. They know what they like out of the bedroom. Like across the board, this is somebody that's very sure of themselves. Maybe even it feels a bit cocky or a bit overconfident, but hey, listen, if you can back it up, <laughs> you know, I can't be mad at you, boo. Uh, so there's that. For those of you that are partnered, married, or in long-term commitments, this is connection to your significant other in ways that are exciting, sexy, and fun. And also, um, it is you and your significant other really working on building that future or maybe future-proofing your plans, I think is what I'm trying to say. And then your fourth week of the month, you've got the strength card. So remember what I said, money worries, not money problems. And that's the difference. But if you continue to project money worries out into the world, that's what you're, you know, eventually they do become problems. So this month, you've really got to fix your mind around finances. And when it comes to your physical health, binging, whether this is drinking, whether it's eating, whatever it might be, be very conscious of that because the strength card usually represents the physical body. So something to be mindful of. For the full moon, uh, new moon in the sign of Virgo, this for you is in your um, ninth house, I believe. Um, this for you, so the gate 12 and caution, it's not a message to be cautious, it's a message to find a way to stop being so cautious. That's what I love about this card, it's kind of like a juxtaposition, and because the new moon is happening at the on the 27th of August, it's right in this fourth week of the month, which suggests if you're having money worries, this is where your mind is really overcoming the matter. Um, and that's something that you need to look at. Maybe you're being too cautious, maybe you're too, being too pragmatic. Um, you know, if there's an, a chance to expand, you got to take it. And then for your full moon message, which is the full moon in Aquarius, you've got the gate 30 and holding. So the full moon is happening in this sort of area of the month. And what I will say to you with this card, it's about really holding on to your dream. It's about really envisioning what is the biggest, best and brightest thing that you could envision for your life? What is it that you really want? Because that Aquarius full moon is gonna show you how you can get it, all right? So around that full moon in Aquarius, you're gonna have a moment where you can, it's like what you want, you will know because it's something that you want, right? It's something that your, your desire energy is attached to. But the Aquarius full moon, even though it's gonna be an intense one, it will reveal to you the steps that you need to take to make that thing a reality. And that could be really awesome. With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic month. And let me know in the comments how it shapes up. Take care and I'll see you soon.